That leads us to the main card, and we'll take it from the main event on down. AEW World Title Match, Samoa Joe against Swerve Strickland. If you were looking at this with odds, Swerve's a minus 200 as of now. Samoa Joe a plus 150. I, look, I, Swerve Strickland, I would probably put the belt on him now, but... Samoa Joe has been a strong champion, even though the times have not been great for them. I don't think you can blame Samoa Joe for a lot of AEW's problems and the lack of interest. But, you know, could could there's a lot that could happen here. Swerve could win, but could Hangman Page come back and cause Joe to get the victory? I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I think Hangman comes back. I think Joe retains. I think Hangman beats Joe. And then you get... What a year ago, I guess you would have thought was impossible when Swerve was committing home invasion and threatening Hangman's life. But you'll have the big baby face win by Swerve Strickland for the title over Hangman. Brian Danielson and Will Ospreay. Will Ospreay, a large favorite, a minus 1,000. Brian Danielson, plus 500. Brian Danielson always puts everybody over, you know, to the point where we've made fun of him on the show for how often he's put people over. This, look, I would say Brian Danielson should get on a winning streak, maybe get himself back into the title picture. I would like that, but it ain't the time to beat Will Ospreay. No way, no how. What do you think? As much as I would love to see Brian Danielson get a win, always be in title contention it's it's osprey's time to win this match so aew tbs title house rules match julia hart against willow nightingale willow nightingale at these odds that i'm looking at actually the underdog plus 300 julia hart minus five i look i like julia hart i like the gimmick and i like I like she's probably at times my favorite member of the House of Black, but like, isn't it some point in time to like do something with Willow Nightingale, belt up Willow Nightingale here, or are these odds reflecting that people think that Mercedes or maybe Chris Statlander is going to cause some havoc for Willow? I think Julia Hart retains. I don't see any other way. I don't think Willow needs any sort of title, especially not right now. I think what she needs is big wins, you know, maybe a little bit more of a spotlight. What are you thinking? Chris Statlander turns here. It's a, is like that it's what been, we've been building to? I would imagine. I, it's been feeling like yeah. that. You know, and it, that and if that does happen, then surely Willow doesn't need to win the belt. So and look, and I look, Mercedes is probably better. I would like Mercedes to be in the position as a heel, and I think Chris Statlander. I think she needs to be focused on, too. I mean, if you want to go ahead and turn them and have Stokely, Stokely Hathaway there to be, you know, a thorn in the side of everything, I mean, that could be a way to do it where then that's just another roadblock for Willow to have to overcome, you know, beating Chris Statlander to get to Mercedes. I mean, you could do it that way, I guess. But at some point, Mercedes is also going to have to get in the ring. World Tag Team Title Tournament Final Ladder Match, the Young Bucks. Minus 300 favorites, even though I would think it would be higher against FTR. Plus 200 right now. The only thing that makes, well, not the only thing, but the thing that makes the most sense to me here with Jungle Boy, Jack Perry, coming back from New Japan, coming back as the scapegoat, with why we've seen the build-up to this match, it's just natural that he goes in, interferes, and causes FTR to lose and the Young Bucks to win, which means FTR has looked, boy, have they, I don't know when their last big match win here is, but they have looked being beaten flat. I don't know who you bring in. You know, who's the answer to help him and help them team up and face the Young Bucks and try to get the titles and go up against Jack Perry in six-man matches? But, I mean, Tom, what do you think? Because, again, it seems like it sucks right now for FTR. Well, I noticed that as we run down all these matches, it all revolves around people coming back and interfering and causing oh, havoc. No. It seems like all the storylines have been revolving around that. I think FTR is always going to be over with the fans to a certain extent. 
I think bringing Jack Perry back here and having him join with the Young Bucks and Okada is the perfect choice for this character, for this storyline that they're doing. And then, I mean, I, I'm not so focused on what happens with FTR after that. Maybe they'll go after those trios titles with Daniel Garcia again. Remember that team? Well, uh, it, yeah, well, you got Daniel Garcia beat up this past week here, but I mean, yeah. I guess you could you could have FTR win. It's just to me then you would need somebody to offset interference from Jack Perry and I guess that's a, another question. What is Jack Perry's first feud back? What's his first big deal back? Is it John Moxley? I mean, who who is it? Yeah, I mean, if you want to play off of the storyline with Shooter, I guess it could be John Moxley, but um, you know, I don't know who it is. You know, maybe it's Daniel I thought Garcia. You meant CM Punk there for a minute, you know. Maybe, maybe it is Daniel Garcia that makes the save. I mean, who's? I, I'm waiting for the debut, honestly, of the other team, the other guy that was always airing backstage footage, and that's Alex Shelley. When are these Motor, Motor City Machine Guns coming in? to take on the young bucks that's what i want to see yeah i you know what now that everything has been wrapped up and it was officially last night on tna television they had their loss it is over everybody knows that their contract is up and they are going to be leaving anyway so they are free agents you know to me it makes sense that they show up on wednesday maybe to get in the young bucks face i wouldn't mind that at all Six-man tag team match. Adam Copeland, Eddie Kingston, and Mark Briscoe, who are favorited over the House of Black. Brody King, Buddy Matthews, and Malachi Black. I would like to see Adam Copeland and, and Malachi Black as a feud. I would like to see Eddie Kingston and Brody King beat the hell out of each other. And I'd like to see Mark Briscoe and Buddy Matthews have matches as well, too. Um, with that said, <laughs> I, 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 I would hope that, let's say it's... Brody King over Eddie Kingston. You know, I'll take that as far as a, you know, a thing goes here to, to end this match. But the way Brian talks, there's no way. It's almost like they're never going to do business. So Adam Clopinland and Malachi Black, I mean, that seems to make sense. But I don't know. What do you think? Maybe we get Brody King over Mark Briscoe. Sets him up for a shot at the Ring of Honor title. That's that's a feud I'd like to watch for that belt. Yeah, it would be physical right? for it's sure. It's about time. I think it's about time Brody King gets moved up the card. And that's about as much as you can move him up right now with a just log jam of talent. Put him in a main event feud on what is essentially the B show and give him that experience while you can because, I mean, he's awesome. And he's going to be for a long time, barring any major injury. He doesn't wrestle some crazy style no. where he seems to get injured all the time. And so. we haven't seen nothing out of him, unfortunately, because of injuries and other things. I mean, we've gotten little glimpses of it, but we have not seen what the potential in Brody King on the AEW roster. So, yeah, I would love to see something like that, have him be used for that. And now that Mark Briscoe is ROH champion, I'm all for keeping things separate. But with what Collision and Dynamite usually do or what Collision and Rampage usually do, I would utilize him as much as possible on TV. You know, to me, he's a draw. I don't have any metrics to back that up, but it would make Delmarva happy. Uh, AEW World Women's Title Match: Tony Storm against Thunder Rosa. Most people think Tony Storm is going to win. I do as well. Uh, not the time to pull the uh, plug on this, is it? No. There's uh, there's so much going on with Tony Storm. Uh, obviously, I was at the Stardom show a few weeks ago where she made an appearance, and then now there's been some love triangle or quadrangle with Mina Shirakawa who now apparently has split Club Venus away and his, his own faction as well. So mm -hmm. then you have, of course, Mariah May. You have uh, Thunder Rosa. You have Deanna Parazzo all staking their claim in this situation. So it's it's a volatile, to say the least, but Tony Storm clearly the most overact in this division. So keep the belt on her, whether she's a heel, whether she's a baby face. I mean, you got to play this hand while it's hot. AEW Continental title, Kazuchika Okada 
minus 800, pack plus 425. Match is going to be awesome. I think Okada wins. What do you think? Yeah, I think this is just the one of the first steps on the way to Okada building this belt up, much like the old IWGP Intercontinental title was built up to the status of a secondary world championship. And, uh, you know, it looked like we were kind of getting a storyline in that vein when Punk brought back the real world title. So I think we're going to get that again in the future with two major singles championship belts and then a big showdown at the end for him. Do you think he took that with him? I remember he came out with it in London, but, you know, did they quickly pull it off the table? Did he go to the back with it? I can't remember. But uh, AEW International title, because we have nothing but titles. Roderick Strong, minus 150. Kyle O'Reilly, plus 200. Probably too early to take the belt off of Strong. Uh, a win here to actually start this feud in a title match wouldn't hurt my feelings. Because I'd like to see O'Reilly win at some point or this to actually continue on because they'll be great together. Yeah, you could have the kingdom interfere. You could have it's the simple story of Kyle O'Reilly really fighting back from a long, long injury, and you can see the physical differences in him, and that simply could be the story. You know what I mean? Roderick Strong goes after the guy's back all the time, and all those nerves, yep. the neck damage, everything could compound and it could tell an easy story so that's going to be a great match as we said earlier I, i'm guessing all these matches are going to be pretty darn good even the one with chris jericho and hook i hope hook wins thank you for watching make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again